So here we are going to start with the examination of third, fourth, and sixth grade. You know, due to similarity of their action, these nerves are examined together. Third, fourth, and sixth nerve. Third is obliquator, fourth is trochlear, and sixth is of abducens nerve. So what we are supposed to do? We are going to do examination is in these main points: position of head, grouping of upper eyelid, strain, nystagmus, movement of eyeball. And then size and shape of pupil. Then we are going to do light reflex, and that is direct and indirect. And then we are going to do accommodation reflex. So we are starting with the position of head. So first of all, we are looking for the position of head, which is straight in case of this subject, but it may be little uh, you know deviated. So we call it as trochlearis. And why it is deviated? Suppose a uh, lateral lateral of this side is paralyzed. Okay. Suppose if any muscle. Is paralyzed in such a way that I cannot move my eyes in this direction. So in that case, to uh, look for that field of vision, I will rotate my head. And that head, in that case, head will be rotated permanently. And this condition is called as torticollis. So position of head is important here. Next, we are going to do. We will look for the drooping of upper eyelid. So uh, in our subject, there is no drooping of upper upper eyelid. Why we are looking for the drooping of upper eyelid or ptosis? Because our third cranial nerve supplies the levator palpebri superiorsis, which is muscle of upper eyelid. So in case if it is paralyzed, there will be drooping of upper eyelid. Then uh, we will look for the presence of squint. Normally the visual axis of both the eye uh, meet with each other, but in case of paralysis of any of the muscles. One eye may be deviated to another side, and uh, for looking that, we uh, need to uh, put torch light. If that torch light is not coming at the center of the pupil of both the eyes, it means it is the case of squint. But uh, we are not discussing that in detail here. And uh, next point is nystagmus. What is nystagmus? Nystagmus is to and fro oscillating movement of the eye. So, which is not present here, we don't have nystagmus in our subject. Then we will look for the movements of eyeball. Uh, so, for looking the movements of eyeball, we must understand the functions of different muscles of the eyeball. So, we come to uh, this diagram. We can see uh, that uh, we have medial rectus, lateral rectus, superior and inferior rectus, inferior and superior oblique. So function of the medial rectus is adduction of eye, and function of the lateral rectus is abduction of eyes. And here function of the inferior oblique is elevation of the eye when the eye is in adducted position. And uh, function of the superior oblique is uh, depression of eye when the eye is adducted. Function of the superior rectus is elevation of the eye when the eye is abducted. Function of the inferior rectus is depression of the eye when the eye is in abducted position. Okay. Uh, what is uh, now um, for the movements extorsion and intorsion? For extorsion, for extorsion, uh, inferior oblique and inferior rectus muscles are responsible, and for intorsion, superior oblique and superior rectus muscle are responsible. Now um, the question is: uh, We can see adduction, abduction of eye. We can see elevation, depression of eye. But can we see intorsion and extorsion of eye? What is intorsion? Intorsion is rotation of eye towards the nose, or we can say medial rotation of eye. So an extorsion is lateral rotation of the eye, rotation of the eye towards the temporal side. But as movements of the eye, we see basically by the movements of iris. But here it is, you know, circular. So we cannot see intorsion and extorsion movements. Okay, although these movements are there, but we cannot appreciate that because uh, the uh, iris is circular as well as the pupil is also circular. So we cannot see these movements. So we will be able to see only these above movements. So let us see how we can check these movements. So uh, with the help of a pen. We instruct our subject uh, to follow the tip of the pen, and the prerequisite is subject is not supposed to move his head. Okay, so you have to explain the procedure to your subject, 
and you have to do movement of the pen in H shape. Okay, so that you can see the movements of uh, the eyes. And there are two methods. You can check uh, the movement of one eye, both the eyes separately and both the eyes together. So here I am going to check the movements of both the eyes at a time. So, Rajesh, what do you want to do? This is a pen tip tip. You can see it. You can see it. See, where the pen tip tip will go, you can see it. But you can see it. You can see it. You can see it. Okay? Now, let's see the movement. So, here I am checking here I am checking the movement of lateral rectus muscle of the right eye and medial rectus muscle of the left eye. So here I am checking uh, superior rectus muscle of the right eye and inferior oblique muscle of the left eye. Here I am testing inferior rectus muscle of the right eye and superior oblique muscle of the left eye. Again, you come in the midline and you go to the opposite side. Here I am checking function of the lateral lattice of the left eye and medial lattice of the right eye. Here I am testing uh, superior lattice of the left eye and inferior oblique of the right eye. Here I am testing inferior lattice of the left eye and superior oblique muscle of the right eye. So this is uh, this is a uh, testing for the all, all of the six muscles of the eye. Of course, we cannot check the uh, extorsion and endorsion movements. So that was about the movements of the eye model. Then come to the size and shape of the pupil. So here, uh, here shape of both the pupils are circular and size is also equal. So uh, why size and shape of the pupil is important? Uh, in case if there will be palsy of the third cranial nerve, size of that side of the pupil will be dilated. Okay, maybe sometimes in the patch of the second cranial nerve. Why shape of the pupil is important? In case if there will be iris, in that case iris may be attached with the may be attached with the lens and that will produce the distorted shape of the iris. So that is why the shape and size of the pupil is important. Then light reflex. Direct and consensual light reflex. Now we uh, must know that uh, for light reflex, afferent is second nerve and efferent is third cranial nerve. So for direct light reflex, we are putting light, we are showing light in the one eye and we are looking for the lesion in the same eye. Same eye. In consensual light reflex, we are uh, putting light in the one eye and we will ch uh, see change the uh, size of the pupil in another eye, opposite eye. Okay. So, uh, afferent is second and efferent is third cranial now. Okay. Uh, so, here, uh, how we are going to do? I am doing the direct light reflex. You have to uh, suddenly put light and you bring the torch light from lateral side like this. We are looking for the light reflexes. So for direct light reflexes, you ask your patient to look straight and then you suddenly bring light in front of his eyes. And I can see the constriction of the pupil in the same eye. In another eye, I can try like this. So, the change in the uh, uh, size of the pupil. Now, for consensual light reflex, I will show light in one eye and I will look for the pupillary reaction in the another eye. Okay, you have to bring light from lateral side, suddenly you have to bring light and then you have to look for the pupillary reaction in the another eye. Okay, the same, I have to repeat in opposite side. I will put light in one ear and look for the reaction in opposite eye. You have to uh, put some piece of paper or maybe hand of the subject so that the light from one eye should not go to the another eye and it should not produce direct light reflex. So here you can see the reaction in the pupil of the opposite eye. Now we uh, look for the accommodation reflex. Now in accommodation reflex you ask your 
subject to look at the distant object and then you uh, look uh, you bring some a uh, pen or something some object just in front of his eyes and he has to focus on that aapko dur dekhna hai wahan par main kuch pen laun ke aapke aankhon ke samne and you look for the three reaction what is there in the accommodation reaction in accommodation reaction afferent is second cranial now and inferent is third cranial now and uh, the reaction is in uh, in the form of 3c one is constitution of pupil okay because third cranial now is supplying the constitutive pupil second is convergence of the eye wall because your third cranial now is supplying the medial rectus muscle so that will tell you the adduction of eye wall or convergence of eye wall third is increased curvature of lens that is because of contraction of the ciliary muscle which is supplied by the third cranial now and this effect of course we cannot see we cannot see increased curvature of lens so we can see only two effects one is convergence of eye wall and second is constriction of pupil so let us see how we are going to do the accommodation reflex aapko dur wahan dekhna hai pen ki taraf dekhna hai dur wahan dekhna hai jaise main pen laun to pen ki taraf So here I can see uh, two reactions. One is convergence of eye ball, and second is constriction of pupil. If you see carefully, there was constriction of pupil. So that is all about the third, fourth, and sixth cranial nerve examination. So third, fourth, and sixth cranial nerve in, in my subject was within normal limits. Thank you.